Hello everyone, this is CHM301, Atomic and Molecular Structure and Bonding. This is a post-quiz workshop lecture for 2020-2021 session. I'm Andrew Tehemi Kiowa, a lecture of physical chemistry in the Department of Chemistry, Benue State University, occurred in Nigeria. This lecture is meant for my third year chemistry students here at the Benue State University and other students worldwide who are interested in the videos I make on this channel. If you have any questions or any comments, I encourage you to send those to me using either my university email address or my Google email address. Alternatively, you can leave comments or questions in the comment section of the video on YouTube and I'll do my best to respond. Question 1 says, Calculate the energy of photons emitted by radiation of wavelength 850 nanometer. The energy of a photon is actually the product of the Planck's constant and the frequency. In this case, we don't have frequency. Frequency wasn't provided by the question. So we know that photon are quantum of light and therefore they have the same speed as the speed of light. So if we combine the speed of light with the wavelength, we should be able to obtain frequency. So that gives h the Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. If we substitute the Planck's constant, the speed of light, and of course the wavelength, then we obtain this as the resultant expression, which we can evaluate to obtain the energy of the photon. That gives 2.3 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joule as the energy of one of the photons. Question 2 says, Calculate the de Broglie wavelength of an electron having a kinetic energy of 2000 electron volt. Uh, by de Broglie hypothesis, the wavelength of a particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the particle. So we know the value of Planck's constant, we can find that in any standard physical chemistry textbook. Uh, but we don't know the momentum of the electron. What we do know is that we can move from the kinetic energy of a particle to its momentum. So to do that, we know that kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared where m is the mass of the particle, v is the velocity. We can write this in terms of momentum as uh, p squared all over 2m, where p is the momentum of the particle, and of course m the mass of the particle. If we make momentum the subject of the formula, we obtain 2m um, times the kinetic energy all in square root. If we substitute the values for the mass as far as the kinetic energy, we obtain this as the resultant mathematical expression. Um, this is the mass of the electron and this is the kinetic energy. Of course, we are multiplying the kinetic energy by 1.602 times 10 to the power of negative 90 joule per electron to convert it from electron volt to um, energy and joule. That gives the momentum of the particle as 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 23 kg meter per second. Now that we've got the momentum of the particle, we can then substitute into the de Broglie formula. That gives um, the Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the particle, 
which is equal to 27.6 times 10 to the power of negative 12 meter, which we can write as 27.6 uh, picometer. Question 3 says, what is the linear momentum of a particle whose wave function is psi of x equal to exponential i k x, where i is a complex number, k is a constant, and x the position of the particle? We know that the linear momentum of a particle by quantum metrics is given by the linear momentum operator, uh, which is a p with a caveat on it equal to negative i h bar times the first derivative. Of course, h bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. So if we apply the momentum operator on the wave function, we obtain this. Um, as the resultant expression. If we differentiate the exponential term uh, and obtain the first derivative, it gives this as the next expression. Of course, this can be further evaluated to um, negative i squared times k and psi of x. Of course, uh, psi of x represents this uh, wave function, which already appears after we've carried out the differentiation. Now, i squared is equal to negative 1. So if we substitute negative 1 for i squared, multiply by k, multiply by psi, we obtain k times psi of x. So the linear momentum of the particle is therefore k. Question 4 says, normalize the wave function psi of x equal to exponential negative a times x squared over the domain negative infinity to positive infinity. To normalize a wave function, the procedure is, first of all, we multiply the wave function by n, where n is the normalization constant. We take the square of the wave function and integrate it over the domain asked by the question and equate it to 1. And then find the value of n thereafter and multiply the value of n by the given wave function to obtain the normalized wave function. So, that gives this as the first step, and this evaluates to uh, this as the second step, and we know that the integral negative infinity to positive infinity of this gives the square root of pi all over 2. So if we substitute the square root of pi all over 2, in here, we obtain this. We make n the subject of the formula, which gives us the fourth root of 2 all over pi. Now, now that we found n, we multiply n by the given wave function, and that gives us the normalized uh, wave function. So the normalized wave function is psi of x equal to the fourth root of 2 all over pi times exponential negative a x squared. Of course, a is a constant. The fifth Question says two consecutive energy levels of a harmonic oscillator are 200 electron volt and 300 electron volt. What 
add the quantum numbers of these energy levels. We know that the energy level of a harmonic oscillator is equal to E, uh, which is the energy, times in parentheses n plus half times h bar times omega, where h bar is um, plus constant divided by 2 pi. Omega is, of course, the angular frequency, and n is the quantum number of the energy level. So for the first one, let the quantum number of E be n. That gives 200 electron volt equal to this. Because there are consecutive energy levels, the next higher energy level is going to be n plus 1. So for 300 electron volt, we have n plus 1 plus half, or in parentheses, times h bar times omega. We don't know what omega is, we know h bar. But that creates a problem for us. So to solve this problem, we take a ratio uh, of the energy levels. When we take the ratio of the energy levels, we obtain this, which simplifies down to uh, this, which can further be simplified to uh, this expression, which we can further simplify to this expression. This is ordinary level mathematics. I don't have to go through it in details. And if we rearrange and try to make n the subject of the formula, we arrive at this which evaluates to n equal to 1.5 and because quantum numbers of harmonic oscillators are never half, we approximate that to the nearest whole number which gives 2. That is to say the quantum number of the first energy level is 2 where that of the next conservative energy level is 3. Right, so if you find this video helpful, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, ring the bell so that you'll be notified when new videos are available, like, comment, and share. Thank you for watching. You will find a link to the PDF version of this lecture in the video description. If you have any questions or any comments, I encourage you to send those to me using either my university email address or my Google email address. You can also leave comments and questions in the comment section of the video on YouTube and I'll do my best to respond. Bye now.